What's up everyone, my name is Brace, and this is the first video in a three-part series on generative UI and Langchain. In this video, we're going to be covering a couple topics around what is generative UI, some use cases, and the architectures we're going to be using to build the next two videos um, for the TypeScript and Python version. So what is generative UI? Generative UI is when you use a reasoning engine like a language model to dynamically select UI components that you then render for the user. So this is different from previous methods because before you might have some sort of key value mapping between user preferences or settings and actions they take to UI components, but it was pretty static and it wasn't very dynamic based on what the user is actively doing in their session. However, when we in combine the power of reasoning engines like large language models, we can take other modes of input like audio, you know, video, uh, text they've submitted, and from there, have the language model reason about the best UI components, or in our case, tools, which then map to UI components, to select and then render for the user on the fly based on the input they just gave you. Let's take a look at some use cases. So today, most sites are going to be pretty static. They might be slightly dynamic based on some predefined mappings the developer has set. However, they're not going to be too personalizable and uh, dynamic on the fly like we can do with large language models and generative UI. So if we take the example we're going to build the next two videos, we have a chatbot. Our chatbot has a list of tools. Each tool maps to a component. Based on your natural language you've submitted and your chat history, the language model can reason about which tool, and then under the hood that maps to a UI component, will best fit your needs and your requests. So you could say something like, what's the weather today? It'll then say, what city and state are you referencing? Say San Francisco, California. It can then take in your chat history, which is the most recent message you said, where you only said San Francisco, California. Um, but it also has your chat history, so it'll also have you saying, what's the weather? And based on that, it can select the proper tool, in this case, the weather tool, and then render the weather for you. It doesn't need any follow-up text, just gives you the weather. You could also say something like, What's the deal with my invoice? It can then select an invoice tool. You could upload a, you know, a screenshot or a photo of a receipt. Since we're using language models and modern language models have the ability to read uh, images, it can then take that image, parse the text on it, and reason about which tool will be best. If it wants to take the invoice tool and say, populate an invoice form, it can use the image you submitted with your receipt or you know, your email order confirmation and populate the fields you would need for that invoice UI component. Um, and with previous websites, this wouldn't really be possible. You could have some super complicated OCR setup, but it wouldn't work as well as today where language models can just handle all of the dynamic selection on their own. Um, and they do that efficiently and effectively. So if we look here, this is kind of a high level architecture look at how this works. So you take the user input, pass that to a language model, which has a set of tools. Each tool maps to a component. The language model then selects a tool via tool call. That tool obviously maps to a component like we just saw. And then you update your, your UI based on whatever tool and component were selected. If we now go at a look at a quick demo, we can see this website. This is what we're going to be building um, in the next video. And we can say something like, hey, how's it going? And it gives us just text back. No UI components, didn't use any tools. It just streamed this text back. How can I assist you today? We can say something like, what's the deal with the, what's the deal with the lane chain AI slash lane graph repo? Hit submit. We see we get back that loading component. It was pretty quick, so we only saw the loading component for a second. And then we get back this, this interactable um, component on our repo. So we see lane, lane chain AI and lane graph, that's what I supplied to it. And then it has the description, the language, stars, and this button here. These components are just normal React components. So as you saw there, they're interactable. I can click on it, visit a website. They can, have, they can be stateful. They can edit APIs. Um, it's really any React component you may have used in the past. Um, so we see that it, hit the, it, 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 it took in our input. It then selected the GitHub tool. As soon as it selected the GitHub tool, we saw that loading component. Um, this is one reason why Gen UI is much better than other implementations of this because you can really get the user to the first interaction much quicker. It selects the tool before it's even hit the GitHub API or performed any sort of request to get the, the data that you want. It knows the tool, the tool that it's selected and from there we can populate the UI 
with some sort of loading state component so the user is not waiting you know, one, two, three, four seconds for the first interaction based on their request. Now let's take a quick look at how we're going to implement this for JavaScript. As you can see, we take the input, chat history, images, have a list of tools, let's say our weather tool or GitHub tool and our invoice tool. Those tools get bound to an LLM. The LLM is invoked with the user input and the tools is available to it. It is then sent to a, to a conditional edge. If the LLM didn't use a tool and only sent some text back, we will then send that straight back to the UI like we saw with the first chat interaction I had with, it, with our chatbot. If it does use a tool, then we can go to the invoke, invoke tool section. The first thing it's going to do is stream back an initial UI component. We saw that there where the GitHub tool had this loading state. So it selects the tool, hasn't performed any sort of function inside the tool, and it's instantly given us back some UI to show to the user to let it know that it's working on its request. Then we, we execute the tool function. This is any sort of arbitrary JavaScript Python function. Obviously, JavaScript, we're using JavaScript right now. Um, but it hits, in our case, the GitHub API, it could do really anything. And then we update UI component stream, which sends back a new UI component to our UI and replaces the old loading state. You can update it as many times as you would like. You can replace it with totally different components. Um, you can picture this as like a div you have on your page and you're just swapping it out with whatever JSX uh, you send back to it every time you call update. Finally, when we're done with it, we call done and then it exits the uh, lane graph loop and goes back to the user and waits for some more inputs. If we look at the Python one, it's pretty similar. We have our server section here and our client section. So it starts out the same. We have our user input, our tools, our language model, and our conditional edge. If it's just text, then we leave the server and send that text right back to the client where it's rendered on the UI. If it selects a tool, then we're going to stream back the name of the tool to the client. This dotted arrow indicates a streaming um, interaction. So we stream back the name of the tool. Then on the client, we map the tool to the component and render it. So same as JavaScript, as soon as it selects the tool, streams it back to the client and we render some sort of loading or intermediate state, co state component. Execute our tool function, get the results of that function, stream those results back, and then re-update our UI with whatever the new populated or updated uh, component is. And that's pretty much all it is. You can customize it to be a little more interactable, but as we saw from these two diagrams, it's possible in both JavaScript and Python, and it'll work pretty much the exact same with your code on the server. In JavaScript and TypeScript, it's going to be React server components. Under the hood, we're using the AI SDK for this. They do a lot of the heavy lifting under um, the React server components and sending components from the server to the client. Uh, but yeah, as we saw, it works pretty much the same in JavaScript and Python. All the functionality is there. You can stream everything back. You can update the user instantly with some sort of loading component so they're not waiting, and then perform your function, finish it up, send back the final component, and go on to the next interaction. That should be it for this video. I'm going to link some resources in the description. If you're not familiar with a couple concepts like GenUI, we already have docs on in our JavaScript library. You should be very familiar with tools. I'm going to link a video to tool calling. I highly recommend watch that if you're not already familiar with how tools and language model works, because that's kind of the basis for how all of these component selections um, are picked. And then I'm going to link for the next two videos. If they're not out yet, they obviously won't be linked. But once those are released, then we're going to update that description. So you can go to the next video, which is going to be tomorrow. And it's going to be the JavaScript video on how we're implementing this chatbot in JavaScript. And the next day is going to be the Python video on how we're implementing this chatbot in Python. So I will see you all in the next video.